let's take a look at how we might approach a gas law problem. So first, when we are doing a gas law problem, we need to identify what type of a problem are we working with. Are we working with the ideal gas law or are we working with one of the other gas laws? The ideal gas law is one moment in time, whereas the other gas laws were looking at some sort of change happening to the gas. So if we look in our problem, so if we look in this problem, a temperature of a 9,416.2 milliliters sample of I2 is changed. So changed here, that tells us this is not ideal gas law. That's helpful, but there's still a lot of different gas law equations that we could use. So if we're dealing with a change, then it can help if you look at what's happening at time one, and then what's happening at time two. So you want to pull the information out of your problem and organize it so you know what's happening at our first time and what's happening at our second time. It doesn't matter whether this is the start time or the end time or this the start time or end time. As long as you are consistent that everything happening at time one is together and everything that's happening at time two is together. So we have the temperature of a 9,416.2 milliliter sample of I2 is changed. So this is a starting volume. So milliliters tells us that's a volume. So we know our initial volume. So I'm going to label the time, the volume at time one as 9,416.2 milliliters. Okay. Causing a change in pressure from, so that's the starting pressure, so P1. So pressure is kilopascals here, 3.68 kPa. Two, so that means I'm going to a new pressure. That's my two, P2, 55,084.8 torr. If it's new temperature, so new is time two. Time, so this is temperature, so T is for temperature here is negative 174.34 degrees Celsius, and it's new volume, so V2, is 33.559 liters. What was its original temperature in Kelvin? So that means that we're looking here for T1. We do not know what that is, and we want it in Kelvin. So notice that I've organized very carefully all of my variables. Now I need to figure out what formula am I dealing with? So I need a formula that's going to have V1, P1, T1, V2, P2, and T2. So let's take a look at our formulas and equivalencies that you will be provided on the exam. We want a formula that has P1, V1, T1, P2, V2, and T2. So it's got a lot of stuff in it. This formula right here has everything that we need. This is the combined gas law. The name's not as important as that you've got this relationship between your variables. So this is the formula that I'm going to have to use. So I have P1V1 over T1 is equal to P2V2 over T2. And we're going to be solving for T1 here. Now, you want to be very careful when you're working with a variable that's in the bottom of a fraction, just in the denominator. I'm going to rearrange my equation first and then start worrying about you know the the values that I have here. So I want t1 by itself. So I'm going to first get rid of my fractions. 
It'll make it easier to deal with. So I can get rid of the fraction by multiplying each side by t1 over 1. So that gets rid of the fraction over here. So I'll get p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 t1 all over t2. I want to get rid of my t2. Multiply it. So I'm going to do the same thing on each side with t2. I'm going to get t2 p1 v1 equals p2 v2 t1. So remember, I'm trying to find t1. So I want t1 by itself. Divide each side by t p2 over v2. P2, P2 cancels out. So I have T1 is equal to T2, V1, V1, over P2, V2. Awesome. Now, you might think, oh, I could just take all these numbers and I can just plug them right in my equation. But we have to be careful about our units. Let's see, first of all, whether our units match up. So volume. This is in milliliters. This is in liters. Oh, they don't match. So I'm going to have to convert it so that these two values are in the same units. Pressure, same problem. I have kilopascals on this side and I have tor on that side. I need to make sure that they're in the same units. Kelvin on this side. Degrees Celsius on this side, I'm going to have to make sure that they're in the same units. And specifically, I want them in Kelvin because all gas law problems have to be in Kelvin. Okay, so this is going to require a lot of different uh, conversions here. So to make this a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to convert all of my units to the same as what I have at T1. So at time one. Now, the uh, you can convert to either unit. So you can do milliliters or liters. You do kilopascals or tor. But for the temperature, you always have to do for Kelvin. So let's start by converting our 33.559 liters to milliliters. Done this conversion a lot. I'm not going to go over this in too much detail. So we have for every one milliliter, we have 10 to the negative third liters. So I am going to have 33.559 milliliters. Now let's take a look at our pressure. I want to convert my pressure in tor to kilopascals. I could go the other direction. Either way is fine. So I don't know one of those right off the top of my head. We haven't done one of these that often before. So let's take a look at what that looks like from our equation sheet. If we look at our equation sheet, we can see, hey, there's Tor. There's Pascal. We don't have kilopascal, though. So I'm going to see whether I can use these two equivalencies to help me. So I have Tor, I have Pascal. See whether that'll get me where I need to go. So I have my units in Tor, but I don't have a, anything to directly get me to kilopascals. But I do have a relationship from Tor to atmospheres. So let's see whether that'll help me. So if I get my units into atmospheres, hey, I've got a relationship that'll then get me into Pascal's now, pascals and kilopascals, hey, we know how to do that because it's kilo. We're talking about the same metric units that we've been using all course. So I can use my relationship between pascals and kilopascals. So toward an atmosphere, I'm going to use this equivalency for this step. Atmospheres to pascals. 
I'm going to use in this step. Pascals to kilopascals, 1 kilopascal is going to be 10 to the third pascal, or 1 kilopascal is equal to 1,000 pascal. So I have all of the equivalencies I'm going to need to do these conversions. So I'm going to start with my, my tor. I have 55,084.8 tor to atmosphere. So I have one atmosphere for every 760 tor so that my tor are going to cancel out and I'll be in atmospheres. Then I want to go from atmospheres to pascals. So I want pascals, 101325 pascals for every one atmosphere. So that'll cancel out my atmospheres. And then I want to get to kilopascals. So I have one kilopascal for every 1,000 pascal. Now I can plug all of this into my calculator and determine my, my value in kilopascals. So that gives me 7,344.036 kilopascals. I double check my significant figures. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, I don't need that one, so I'm going to have... 7344.04 kPa, so kilopascals. So that's going to be my P2. Now I still need to do my T2, just to make sure we have everything on the same page. I'm going to uh, just write some things up here so we have. Milliliters. This is seven three four four point zero four pascals. For the temperature, let's take a look at how we convert that from our equation sheet, or if you've already have it memorized, we have at 273.15 to get from Celsius to Kelvin. So notice this is a negative, so be careful about uh, adding a negative to a positive. I'm going to find my, do my math on this. So I get 98.81 Kelvin. Right. Let's plug all of this into our equation. So T2, we have 98.81 Kelvin. P1, we have 53.68 kilopascals. V1, we have 9416.2 milliliters. P2, we have 7344.04 kilopascals. And V2, we have 33559 milliliters. Put all of this into our calculator, and we get 0.2. 0, 2, 6, double check my significant figures, 1, 2, 3, 4 is the least, Kelvin. So our new temperature, so our T1, is equal to 0 0.2026 Kelvin. It's an unusual temperature, but not impossible. Do keep in mind that this is one of the more complicated types of these problems. Most problems, you're only going to have one or two of the variables that have units that are that don't match. So most of these are going to be a little bit faster than doing this particular problem.
The main thing throughout all of these is to be very, very careful about your units. Keep track. Make sure that your units are consistent throughout.